we go to these things throughout life and, and, and we usually sit on that side and it's my turn now. And I'm trying to soak up every moment of it because as much sorrow as I feel, my family feels. Don't see it as odd that I understand that there's something good at the same time. We practice virtues in the face of adversity. And if we face sorrow, I truly believe we'll know great joy. I'm believing that now. Because as we read throughout life, and I've read different philosophies, no matter what religion, you can read about Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius and his meditations. What the great thinkers always taught was that true greatness is in us facing ourselves and facing pain and difficulty and challenges. And this challenge, why I don't welcome, okay, not here with us and with me, I'm going to welcome the experience in the sense that we can transmute from these things. Knowledge is intellectual, but putting it into practice will build wisdom. That's what the great teachers teach. It's a dark chapter, but at the end, if we write it right, I truly believe we'll be greater for it for ourselves beyond vanity, beyond perceptions of mundane things, but we really get to know ourselves in these moments. And right now, life has given me, my family, and each one of you who love Anki Pisano, it's, life's just dealt us an opportunity to really reflect back on what values we have. When I kissed my niece, I smelled her cheek the other day, and it was so sweet. And we always say, smell the flowers, and we know no. You really need to stop and smell the flowers. And I've always heard that phrase, and I'm like, yeah, I stop and smell the flowers. You know, I'll, I'll take a break. But I really haven't the majority of the time. We're smelling the flowers, and it's a sweet scent. So believe me, on behalf of our family, before we begin, we are grateful. We're a family unit. But our extended family here gives us great strength because I think love is a powerful thing. But to truly know el amor que tenemos, that love that we carry, we're going to have to face the challenges. Or write the chapter right. Beyond the storm, that's where you see the sunshine. And I'm going to let it shine because my sister shined for all of us. And this phrase that was put together by the council and so many who loved her, all hands on deck. When we would launch a project, that was on case thing. All hands on deck. Well, all hands on deck are here now, and all hearts are on deck too. We were about to begin, and several loving speakers are going to share a few words. Francis Ward Welter wrote the following quote about grief. The work of the mature person is to carry grief in one hand, and gratitude on the other, and to be stretched by them. How much sorrow can I hold? That's how much gratitude I can give. If I only carry grief, I'll bend towards cynicism and despair. If I only have gratitude, I won't develop much compassion for others' suffering. Grief keeps hearts fluid, and soft, which helps make compassion possible. I'm Donna Perino. I'm a member of the Mayor's Hispanic Advisory Council. And in 1994, I held the title of Latin Director of Latin Community Advancement here at USF. And my office managed the Latino Scholarship Program. Anke came to my attention as a high school senior she met the academic and the need-based criteria and was awarded the scholarship. When she enrolled that fall, <clears throat> I hired her to be my student assistant. I soon learned she was a no-nonsense, all-business, creative, dependable, engaged worker bee. And we got along just fine. 
She worked for me for two and a half years and was the best, hands down, best student assistant I ever had in 33 years at USF. And one of the best office workers I ever had. Despite my pleas, Anke never took breaks. So sometimes I would ask her to sit and chat with me. I always would stress to students, get your money's worth. Don't miss classes. Sit up front. So Anke shared with me that sometimes she had to miss class. Like many children of immigrant parents, she was the family translator, accompanying them to doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, business appointments, making calls for them, or being home when repairmen have to come. She told me she was also the family techie. We didn't use that term then. She said electronics expert. She set up electronic equipment. Uh, she gave tutorials as needed. She troubleshooted. She was so proficient that her parents asked her, won't you do this for our friends? And of course she, she did. So that told me that she was a loving, dutiful daughter. Una hija buena. Anke's scholarship sponsor was Glucinse, a charitable Hispanic organization. Uh, made up of women, mostly. They held luncheons to raise funds, so Anke and I would drive down, and she would speak. And I observed these ladies a little misty-eyed when she spoke, not because she was saying anything sad. I think they were awed by hearing and seeing this beautiful, lovely young woman speak so eloquently, like her father, about her achievements, her goals. Anke radiated beauty, but inside, Anke was solid steel. And I don't mean steel in the aspect of coldness. I mean steel in the aspect of strength, durability. If I had to describe Anke in one word, it would be strength. She exhibited strength persevering to complete her master's degree, despite losing her mother just a few weeks before. She showed dogged determination in achieving her PhD. Anke was one of the younger, bright stars of a local core of women and men who are passionate about education and about opening doors to disadvantaged and minority youth. Ten years ago, she joined the Mayor's Hispanic Advisory Council, and I watched her flourish there, too. One thing I really liked about Anke, she was low-key about her achievements. She never bragged. She was humble, a rare and desirable trait. I regarded her as a second daughter. She made me and everyone who knew her so proud. Two closing thoughts. I am certain if she would have stayed with us in 10 years or less, she would have had a deanship type title or a vice president type title of some sort. And that would have been secondary to her title as mother of the star of her firmament, Belize. In the New Testament, Jesus says, blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Anke was pure of heart. And although she left us much too soon, I'm comforted knowing where she is. Senor Pisano, Rafael, Cecilia, Belize, Dr. Edwin Daniel, distinguished guests, family, and friends. I am Jeanette Ruth. I'm a Colonel United States Army Medical Service Corps. I'm on active duty for almost 24 years, stationed at the Defense Health Agency in Washington, DC. I am one of the five founders of the MU chapter and just one of the 219 
distinguished ladies of Sigma Lambda Gamma here at the University of South Florida. Independent, strong, intellectual, loving, a pioneer. Just a few words to describe Anke. Anke was another pioneer in the Pisano family. She was the first generation from a Cuban immigrant family to not only be accepted to university, graduate with a bachelor's and a master's degree, but to earn a PhD. I met Anke in the humble years of Jefferson High School, a wise, quiet girl with just a kind soul. A couple years passed, and we reunited here at USF. Anke not only became one of my closest friends, my sorority sister, my gamma daughter, she became my chiquita, mi Anki. She was my baby sister, mi hermanita. In 96, six ladies could not be more perfectly different from each other. They became Cadena Fuerte. Cadena Fuerte is a strong chain. And that is exactly what they were, an additional six powerful links to the new chapter. Anke was that link between the captain and the rest of that chain. She was a strong link that maintained the captain leading that chain. Even after Cadena Fuerte, Anke took the initiative and followed her heart to spread sisterhood as wide as she could. Her love reached all the way to West Point, New York. Due to her efforts, we had sisters graduating from one of the prestigious and top schools in the country, the United States Army Military Academy. Because of Anke, Sigma Linda Gamma obtains many more sisters in the Army Commissioned Corps serving our country across the world. From 2002 and 2003, Anke was also influential in the expansions of Sigma Linda Gamma in the University of Tampa. Anke dedicated countless hours to establish the first multicultural fraternal organization at the University of Tampa, from interest groups to charter status. Their time, values, and dedication she provided to a founding line of 12 stunning women and mentor them into sisterhood. The founding line of Sigma Beta chapter of Sigma Lambda Gamma, the University of Tampa states, and I quote, Anke will most be remembered for her strength, grace, beautiful smile, and poise. As a leader, she challenged us to never settle and always give the best of ourselves in all that we did. She stood out as a woman of distinction and someone we greatly admire. We will continue to honor her legacy and the value she instilled in us." End quote from Nisha Reyes. You know, I can continue to outline and read to you a list of positions that Anke held within the new chapter. But what I cannot read to you is that Anke was not only a sister, she was a mentor to all of us. She was her role model to all of us. She was a chapter advisor, a senior leader to our chapter. She laid the foundation to many future pioneers to come. She broke many glass ceilings and led others to do the same. She not only led young people in the community to a better education, but she guided them through their journey. Anke opened doors that changed the history and the course of Latinos, not only here at USF, but in the community of Tampa. Although she touched us in all in very different times of our lives and connected in multiple levels, there is one common denominator, and that is the love that and admiration that everyone had for her. Her smile, her smile brightened up a room her laugh made everyone laugh. Her jokes made you laugh, although they were not always funny. 
But just because it was Anke, and just because it was her, you could not help but just to laugh with her. She brought us joy, love, and most of all, she showed us that no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what you have or you don't have, you can be anything and become anything you want to be. And with hard work and dedication, the sky is the limit. For the past two decades, with her wisdom and support, Anke continued to inspire and empower sisters well into their adulthood. As I close, I want to read a poem written by Cassie Mitchell. You meant so much. You meant so much to all of us. You were special and that's no lie. You brighten up the darkest sky and the cloudiest sky. You smile alone warm hearts. Your laugh was like music to hear. I will give absolutely anything to have you well and standing near. Not a second passes when you're not in our minds. Your love we will never forget. The hurt will ease in time. Many tears I have seen and cried. They have all poured out like rain. I know that you are happy now and no longer in pain. I love you and I miss you always, Hunk. Good afternoon. My name is Kate Evans and I'm the executive. Pardon me, I think it's all hitting me. Um, I'm the executive director of USF Women in Leadership and Philanthropy. Although I wish we were gathered here under better circumstances, I think we all need to take this opportunity to celebrate the wonderful woman Anke was. She was humble, she was selfless, and a passionate leader who should be celebrated. Her life was one of service, dedication, and love. <clears throat> Anke was special. She taught us without teaching. She gave without exception, and she exuded a quiet confidence that could move mountains. She had a way of lifting those around her. She inspired us to be better versions of ourselves. Anke and I shared an office in annual giving when she was fundraising for the Latino Scholarship Program. I was new to USF and had only been on campus for my interview. What I knew about the university, I had read online or read in a glossy brochure. I wasn't good enough to Anke. She wanted me to experience USF to know the people who made it such a unique place. Over the first few weeks, I grew to know the university through Anke's eyes. Her role as a USF ambassador was something on which she placed a great deal of importance. Ambassadors belong to an exclusive group of leaders with exceptional character who aspire to improve USF. Anke served as the ambassador's uh, secretary recording memories and details from meetings. Her fellow ambassadors said she was the glue that held the entire group together, always raising the bar and challenging those around her to exceed expectations. I felt the same way every day sharing an office with Anke. The more Anke taught me about USF, the more I understood the tremendous impact our university and the ambassador program had on her life. She was an outstanding student and the recipient of several scholarships. She was committed, she was passionate, supportive, and most of all, determined to make an impact and create opportunity for future generations. Her friend said you could count on Anke for anything. That, that was the Anke we knew in the foundation, and that was the Anke many of you knew in the community while she was fundraising for the Latino Scholarship Program. She volunteered to serve before she was even asked, inspired others, and always found a way to go above and beyond, always to benefit something greater. What made Anke so special? Her selfless passion. 
She gave of herself. She connected those around her. And she never expected anything in return from any of us. Her life's work was for the community from which she came, the community that helped her grow, and those who were coming up behind her. She had the drive and determination to succeed. And we can say that about many people we know. But what was exceptional about Anke, truly exceptional, was her innate ability to connect those around her and to lift them with her along her journey. Everything she did was from her heart, and everything she did was with purpose. People like Anke are the reason USF is so special. I feel honored to have known Anke, and I'm even more grateful for the legacy she leaves at USF and throughout our community. And Anke will always be remembered in our hearts as a spirit of USF. Braulio Colon is a vice president at the Helios Foundation. And at one time, he was executive director of the Florida College Access Network. And Anke worked for him. He could not be here, but he sent a letter for the family and asked me to read it. To the Pisano family, what a beautiful life Anke lived. She also lived a life of service and commitment to community and education. I'd like to share one example. Dr. Anke Pisano played a key role in the development of the Florida College Access Network, Florida's first collaborative network of organizations, individuals, and institutions working together to increase the number of students who access and succeed in college. Today, the organization serves and supports thousands of students annually. As part of the FCAN team, Anke was a lead in the regional and statewide implementation of the Know How to Go campaign. This effort helped to mobilize communities around a college readiness and access agenda. Anke was also a lead in FCAN administratively, helping the growing organization navigate the USF process in the areas of grants finance, accounting, and HR. Anke was also FCAN's lead liaison and representative to the Hispanic community, appearing on Spanish language TV and radio, promoting the mission of the movement. Anke was undoubtedly passionate, and her commitment to FCAN's mission was powerful and consistent. And as a result, thousands of families and students have access to the supports they need to be prepared for and to succeed in college. Her contribution to our community should forever be celebrated. My name is Tom Miller. I'm a faculty member at USF, and I had the pleasure of teaching and learning from Ann Kay. Um, uh, she received her master's degree uh, from a program that I serve, and I had the opportunity to spend time with her in class. Um, but more significantly, her work on the PhD, um, she chose me to be her major professor. Um, that was daunting, because I don't think anybody's more major than Ann Kay was. Um, <laughs> But uh, let, let me talk just briefly about that process. In the PhD process, you begin by taking courses, like all the courses we have, um, basically. And it's a lot of coursework, a lot of time in the classroom. But then you satisfy that requirement, and then you start the dissertation. And that's basically a book that you're going to write describing your findings from research. And it's the loneliest time in your educational experience because you're the only one writing that particular book. You're the only one doing that research. And the only other person who really is invested in your progress is your major professor. So we became buddies, small b on that. Um, and, and I became comfortable with Ann Kay, as I think so many of you have. She's a, she was a charming young woman, really smart, uh, and had no ego. 
Um, I mean, even upon the completion of her degree, she had no ego. Um, and I, I feel blessed to have known her and to have learned from her. Let me tell you three things I learned from her. Um, I learned the value of determination and drive, what some people might call grit. That was her. Um, she embodied that sort of determination and grit and got things in her way out of her way. Um, and, and she did so with care and a presence uh, that is uh, unique and wonderful. The other thing I learned from her is the value of resilience. Bad stuff happened to her during her program. Well, like COVID, and she was supposed to be interviewing college administrators around the state of Florida, and many of them weren't there. Uh, so she had to manage that and cope with it and be resilient about it. Um, and we worked that through together. Um, so she finished her degree. Um, she, she didn't get a chance to walk across the stage. I didn't get a chance to hood her. Um, those are all rituals associated with the PhD program. But the things that she taught me, I still know. And one of the most important things she taught me is the value of grace. The woman had grace in every possible way. She had a graceful way of speaking. She had a graceful way of talking. She had a graceful way of walking into a room. Um, but you, you know she was there. Um, so um, I, I'm, I'm grateful to Aunt Kay for sharing with me those gifts, that understanding of sort of how things work and how people work. Um, and, and I'm so grateful that I got to spend some time with her and got to know her. And I'll always be that grateful. So thank you. So good afternoon, my friends and dear family. Uh, my name is Brian Bogner. I have the honor of being the Vice Dean for Education at the Morsani College of Medicine and Chair of the Department of Medical Education. And I stand here before you humbly representing really the thousands of students, faculty, staff of the Morsani College of Medicine and USF Health who are here in spirit today with us to celebrate the life of a very special friend and colleague. How precious and special can a life be? As we've already heard through testimony today, and I'm sure a testimony to come, you need look no further than Dr. on Cape Pisano. She was an amazing daughter, sister, mother, partner, colleague, and friend. Anke joined our family at the Morsani College of Medicine in late 2015 in our Department of Medical Education and the Office of MD Admissions. Her primary role was that of Director of MD Admissions and Scholarship and she quit, fit in very quickly. She helped to oversee student recruitment activities for our MD program, which meant arranging details for recruitment events, but also included coordinating directly with students and pre-med advisors from all over Florida and frankly, all over the country. For many students, an email from Anke or a call from her or to her was often their first encounter with our college. How lucky were we to have that happen? These interactions required diplomacy and caring and sensitivity often to confidential matters. Uh, and as we've heard through testimony today, how good was she at that? As you know, getting into medical school is uh, no easy task. It takes years of completing the necessary coursework, bolstering resumes with important research and clinical experiences, and getting incredible grades and scores on exams. 
Anke had a keen sense through her years of experience for finding and nurturing promising students. She also helped us recruit and matriculate an increasingly diverse group of students to the MD program. She was a passionate believer in the power of education and that it could provide access to all and clearly was a living embodiment of that. With great patience and a professional demeanor that we've heard about today, she would guide students through the arduous application process and for some of them in the interview process for our program. She would then be on the front lines for urging and coaxing them for those that were admitted to commit to the Morsani College of Medicine. Each new class of first year medical students included many guided there by Anke. Since she's joined us in 2015, she played a major role in helping our medical school attain the highest caliber students in the state of Florida year over year and is well on our way to becoming one of the best in the nation. Anke was a leader, a collaborator, and a voice of support. She built strong and meaningful relationships with students, staff, and faculty, as well as many others inside and outside the university, coordinating our recruitment and many other events. She had a tremendous work ethic and a commitment to achieving our goals. She was in a phenomenal event planner and was always wanting to represent USF, USF Health, and the Morsani College of Medicine in the most positive way. Our college, department, and admissions family will not be the same without her. She's truly irreplaceable. But please know that hundreds of physicians are practicing medicine across the country today because of that first email or call with Anke. To the Pisano family and her loved ones, we are so very sorry for your loss. Please know that we are here today and in the future if we can be of help or service in any way. Also know, as we've heard, that her legacy and memory will live on in our hearts and minds. How precious and special can a life be? You need look no further than Dr. On Cape Pisano. Thank you for giving me the honor of being part of this celebration of life. Say, sorry for the AV guy. It's like the uh, field goal kicker. Either there or you're not. There's no in between. But. Um, I told Raphael that I didn't know if I could make it through uh, speaking in the video it may have been a little bit easier and probably a little more eloquent. But uh, it is an honor for me to stand here and talk about an individual that I think we can all agree, anyone whose life Anke touched, she made a positive difference. You just knew, as was stated, when everything that she did was with grace, and just entering a room, you knew that she was there. It was that presence before a word was spoken. But I've never met someone who had so many hours in her day and was able to do so much, so much more that I learned of what she was able to accomplish here at the university. But my knowledge was more on the volunteer side of it. And she was an incredible part of the mayor's uh, Hispanic Advisory Council, as, as you have heard, and in a room full of individuals that are very high energy, very strong-willed, very bright, Anke stood her own without a doubt. And whenever she, you read her name on a list of events coordinator, you knew that it was going to be done perfectly. For that matter of fact, she would probably fix the AV system. <laughs> she had the opportunity today, without a doubt. But it, it really was in her heart to, to help others. And I don't know, many in the room probably do understand 
the significance of growing up in an immigrant family where you grow up more quickly because you have to be the adult in the room so many times and you have to not only translate but make decisions that young kids probably shouldn't have to make. And that probably just added to the texture and the wonder of Anke's life. And I have no doubt that that she accepted that role um, willingly and gracefully. We all know what a wonderful soul that she was and so beautiful inside and out. And the example that she left for each and every one of us and to work so hard to, to be given the chances that she was given the scholarships, but then to turn around and many people take those advantages and, and do well with them, but don't take that extra step to reach back and help provide those experiences for other young people. And that's what Anya did. She wanted to give that key of opportunity to every young person that she encountered, and she worked very hard to do that. So we all know what a wonderful individual that she was, what a beautiful life that she lived, what we don't know and probably never know are the burdens that she carried and why she was taken from us so young. Those are the questions that we will not be able to answer. But what we can do is to take the lessons that we learned from Anya to help make our community better, to lift up each and every individual that we encounter and to treat everyone with dignity and respect and try to live a life that is as graceful as Anya's was. So to Roberto, Raphael, Carmen, Belize, Dr. Daniel, our hearts are broken. We can't imagine your pain, but we want you to know that we as a community are here for you during this time. Thank you and God bless. How are we doing? Um, I don't want this feedback. I'll try to stand away. Um, when I got divorced, I had two daughters sitting right there. They were adamant. You're not going to meet nobody else. <laughs> They made a decision. They got to get. They had a meeting about it. I, I wasn't allowed to be a part of it, and they came out and they said, "It's going to be you and us, Daddy. There's nobody else." We hired Aunt Kay. We were working together. Uh, she was helping me plan my daughter's sweet sixteen. My daughters met her. They met her at work events. They got to know her. One day, I said to my kids, "I would like to date someone," and their eyes opened up just like this. <laughs> Who is this? You're going to introduce us to? I said, there's someone that you know. And I felt the little one, her feet started kicking in like a dancing kind of way. She was getting a little excited. And I said, uh, she said, who? I said, Aunt Kay. And they kind of went, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they approved. And um, I knew then I was in trouble, because if you can steal my daughter's heart, then you already have 90% of mine. She came in under the wind of a sail and, and changed my life. It took me a long time to find the love of my life, and I did four years ago. Um, I could tell you Anke was really excited about life. We were planning our future. We were talking about how we were going to get our finances together to be there for our kids. Everything we talked about was about our kids. And we made promises to each other. If something happened to me, you be there for my girls as they get older. You too, if something happens to me, you take care of your new middle child. I call Belize my middle child. Um, she was so serious about Belize. I mean, she loved nothing in this earth more than her daughter. Anke was a leader from behind. Whenever you saw something she was involved in successful, she never wanted the limelight, she never wanted the microphone. Everybody would be giving speeches and you could find her in the back corner hiding. And Riza and I would be like, get up there, you did this. And she'd be like, that's ah, okay. She just, she just wanted to be behind the scenes, you know? Anke struggled with anxiety, not depression. She struggled with anxiety. And um, when she had her anxiety, it was tough for her. She, she went through it. Um, she healed us, and um, I just wish 
I could have been a little bit more there to see what she was struggling with, with that anxiety. I didn't know it was deep. Um, but I could tell you she changed me forever. I have a part of me that's not so pleasant for those of you who know me. And um, she came into my life and destroyed that side of me. She, she put that, that head to shame and got rid of him and helped build this guy, this, the guy who smiled a little bit more and a little bit more patient and I listened a little bit more. And um, it's because of her, through her influence on me. Um, I don't know how else to live but to, to go on the, the way she would have wanted me to, which is be happy, be the change that you want to see in people. But I know what my task is. I have to make sure I provide and I'm always there for beliefs. I made that promise to your mother and I would never renege on that promise. We're gonna be there for you. She wanted nothing more than for you to graduate college. That's what she wanted, to see you with your degree and the many more that you're going to get, so. <laughs> Verizon and I have already started that endeavor. <laughs> Vaisa Calderon, um, Belisa's godmother, Aunt Kay's best friend, you have been a soldier. I don't know how you do this. Chris, you let us, you gave us your wife for a little bit. Thank you. Aunt, um, Verizon just came on board as soon as this happened and just had Belize with her and been with Belize every step of the way so far. Um, Aunt Kay's brother, he was the one that told me. I don't know how he held it together. Um, but this is a very strong family. Aunt Kay was proud of the Pisano name. She knew what her dad did, what her dad meant for Cuba, and she said, I have to put my stake in the ground for the Pisano name. So when she was working on that dissertation, it was during the pandemic, while everybody was saying how they didn't have time to work on their stuff because, you know, of the pandemic, she was battling through there like, like there was no pandemic going on, and she would just be up late working on the draft. Dr. Miller has to have this back in 72 hours. I said, why 72 hours? Why not three weeks? Why, why so fast, R.K.? We gotta get it done. And I was like, oh my God, this girl, take a break. <laughs> but there was one speed she knew, which was fast and get it done. And she wasn't gonna rest until she got that PhD. And when her dad heard Dr. Pozzano, R.K. Pozzano, and she just looked at his face, she just wanted to see him. She was so into her family so into being successful for them. Um, now we got to get Belize. You have a whole lot of degrees to get, Belize. You got a bachelor's, maybe a couple of masters, maybe an MD, we'll talk about that. Um, but um, Riza and I already got together. We put together a GoFundMe account. We're trying to raise money to help pay for Belize's college. We don't want you to worry about finances. We just want you to focus on what you do best, which is studying and educate yourself. And, um, a hundred percent, one hundred percent of the money that is raised will go to Belize College Fund. I don't want a penny of it, neither does Riza. We just want to make sure that we honor your mother's wishes. Um, and we're going to be there for you as long as you want us to be there for you. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I, it, I think Aunt Kay would have tears in her eyes if she saw people celebrating her life. She was so humbled. But um, it means a lot to the family. It means a lot to me. And um, we feel your strength, we feel your support, and we are so thankful that um, you chose to spend your couple of hours with us to remember our kids. So, Raphael's gonna come up, he's gonna probably come up with his dad, they're gonna do translate a little bit so he can speak to you all, but thank you once again so much, and um, may she rest in peace. Um, before I do a closing statement saying, just sharing the amount of appreciation we have for, for everyone here, and some of the persons that I had to list their, their tribute here, I wanted to bring up a gentleman here who's here today who our families go so far back like many of us. That family's special to our family and many families in Tampa because when Anke received that scholarship, which she grew so bright with, the beautiful lady, La Dama, who led that scholarship and gave my sister that opportunity to watch that then fueled her to continue to help others. Uh, it was under a Klukinze, no? was the name of the organization, with uh, the chair was Beita Kennedy. Beita, está aquí? Párate. 
por favor, un beso. Someone that I hold so dear while I was on K scholarship, I mean, it's amazing the labor of love that different families do and each of our families do it here. Her son continues that work and has done that for decades here in Tampa Bay. And they approached our family and asked us pretty much permission, which of course it would be granted for such a beautiful act of substance Simone, would you please approach and, and share with me that information you wanted to present here today? Because I think that was a beautiful thing. And it's one of the seeds that our family was talking about, how we can all give back in the name and spirit of Monkey. Simone Canasi. Good afternoon. I got a big mouth, so I don't really need this microphone if y'all want to turn on. They say the most dangerous place in America is the space between me and a microphone. So, um, You know, when I think about Anke's life, when I think about the ultimate achievement of the American dream, when I think about the fact that Anke's been taken to a, from us way too soon, I think about lost talent. Anke was the benefact, the beneficiary of a scholarship, the Latino scholarship program, through my mother's uh, organization, Glu Quince. And they say that the bridge that you, that you cross to get where you're going is not nearly as important as the bridge you build for the next person to cross. So, we're gonna do that for Anke. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a little story. Uh, last September, I got a phone call from a former client of mine. I retired about three years ago from Wall Street. And <clears throat> she told me, Simon, I've just been diagnosed with terminal pancreatic cancer. And I need you to come see me. I have something I need to share with you. So I went to see her. She said, I'm leaving 90% of my estate to charity to go donor advice fund, and I want you to run it. I want you to be the, the executor. That was quite an honor. Uh, she was my client for 35 years. Her name was Adele Burnett. Dr. Law, she was a she was an employee here at USF for well over 30 years. Adele never married. She was an only child. She left about 10% of her estate to some cousins and some friends. The rest of it went into the donor advised fund. She named about a dozen charities that she told me, I want you to make sure that you, know, you take care of these charities. The rest is up to you. Just make sure it's in the Tampa Bay community that you make a difference. To date, we have already gifted probably to about 70 different charities around the Tampa Bay area. It's a large donor advised fund. Let me tell you that this cause today is right in Adele's wheelhouse. This is something that Adele would embrace. Adele had been a contributor to the Santiago Education Foundation in the past to large amounts. Uh, the Santiago Education Foundation is an organization that I co-founded over 25 years ago. We've done about $4 million in scholarships to date, most of them here at USF through the Latino Scholarship Program. So today I want to announce that in conjunction with the mayor's Hispanic Advisory Council, and I will be working closely with them because I want them to get the credit for this because Anke loved that council so much and they loved her. We're going to establish an endowment in Anke's uh, memory and we hope to raise funds for this endowment and the fund is going to match dollar for dollar up to fifty thousand dollars so that the the endowment reaches a hundred thousand but i'm going to seed the fund immediately with twenty five thousand and our gay's legacy will live on perpetually that way By the way, as Rafael said, our families are tied. My mother and Roberto are dear friends. Rafael and my son are both first responders for Tampa Fire and Rescue, and I'm so proud of both of them. And um, may she rest in peace, but this is, this is truly uh, quite, quite a turnout uh, for Anke. And I know she's up there watching from above and smiling. Thank you. My father has asked me 
as close as he's been through thick and thin to some very unique situations in life. Dr. Fernandez, if you wanted to share anything, you're always welcome to, sir. I guess this is rather spontaneous, obviously unprepared. As the first time that that man walked into my office and asked me to represent a Cuban freedom fighter who'd spent 18 years in prison with him, who had been arrested by federal authorities in the Southern District of Florida shortly after his release from Cuba, and now he was back in custody with the United States seeking to sentence him to 30 years for an attempt on a Russian vessel in the port of Havana, a man who said that the Russians could never be trusted as a government because of their history. He came to see me and he said he had no money and no one did, but he was gonna give me the honor to serve a great cause and that someday there would be a final accounting somewhere. And um, for the next 18 cases, and 30 years across this country and across the world, I have been honored to represent him and his cause. And at the same time, I got to know his family. I got to know this young man to the right. And I remember when I first realized that he would be in the military because he had gotten a BB gun in our building and shot out a frame of a Cuban patriot, as well as part of the wall. Um, it was too late to salvage the frame, but I think it was not too late to salvage him. <laughs> and he has become the pride and joy of an entire family and a community. I knew Ankai from the beginning also. And as many of you who have known her much better in the passage of time, I was only kept abreast occasionally because unlike the rest of the clan, perhaps me included, she was not a legend in her own mind. She showed the simplicity of true greatness and the open mind of true wisdom and always the meekness of true strength. I am really sad to be here because I know what he's going through. I know what Belize is going through. I can't imagine being in the same place. But you see, what I learned from Roberto was the day-to-day -day experience recounted to me, not only by him, but his friends from those who suffered torture and had survived the time where they wished death. I remember what he told me over and over and over every time we got together of what he endured in the Isle of Pines, perhaps one of the worst prisons in the history of mankind. En las circulares de Isla de Pino, el dolor que sufriste. And when I saw him today, as I had seen him when this happened, he told me, and I agreed, that he wished he had died then. Because there is no pain like the pain of losing a child. I don't have any words of wisdom or words of strength because I don't know how he will go home today. This is a man who faced execution and they fired blanks to break him, and he did not break. And Ankai knew that. This is the man who saw his friends executed in front of him, and they did not wish to be gagged or their eyes covered, and invited the bullets that shattered their heads. And he was not afraid. And this is the man who transferred from prison to prison to be tortured, naked, plantados. These are the greatest people 
in my opinion, that have ever lived because the world is witnessing the torture and pain that the aggressors can bring upon a people once they're KGB trained. And what happens is that in his case, very few of the stories ever surfaced and very few of the stories were ever told because unlike the struggles of other people, there's communication with the outside world. There's people that help you and join you. But there is no such thing in what he lived. And what he has lived through today, and he has lived through in the last painful weeks, is something that I could wish to endure the way he has. But as he told me, he said, I wish I had not survived Isla del Vino. And that home, Ankai, through struggles, was likewise raised. And she was one of the ones who I know for a fact knew about Isla del Pino and La Cabaña and every other prison, whether it was Boniat or Boniatico. The East and the West, how they traveled naked throughout the island to be scourged and to be tortured and to be hurt. And she heard each of those things. And I am sure that that influence helped shape her own life. And that's why it's such a sad moment. It's such a sad moment here to see so many people who loved her so much. And I am certain there are a lot of people who are not here who loved her the same way. And I think it's one of these legacies of love that comes from the toughest of backgrounds. Because I can assure you there's nobody in this room that grew up listening to what she had to listen to, feeling the reactions that she had to feel, and seeing the pain that they had caused and the fact that he had had to move on and carry on for their benefit. He told me last week when, when we spoke, he said that Raphael was his relevo, his relief. And he is a, indeed what many of us would wish would carry on in our own lives. And I think what's important is that in this case, police can be Ankai's relief. El relevo será feliz. Te quiero. The following are the thank yous, and the family will stand up here when I finish these and conclude in Belize. Just a moment, please. I was going to read these, and we'll, as a family unit, you'll be the last speaker. First, thank you to each person here today. Some have traveled from abroad. Some have traveled as far as Washington. This microphone is playing with me. Miami and elsewhere. If you came from out of town, I really thank you, and I thank everyone again. I cannot say that enough because you've given us the love and support to give us a boost, which my family needs now. And while they may see me as the pillar, the pillar has its support, and it's here today. So thank you, each and every one of you. On behalf of the Pisano family, I express our deepest gratitude to the Mayor's Hispanic Advisory Council for helping us organize this event. The council loved Anke and has shown great love to our family. The USF Foundation team, they've shown a tremendous amount of affection to for Anke through its support and assistance to the council for this event specifically. Thank you. I thank the USF Alumni Association for making this wonderful, wonderful traditions hall available to our family today and for all of us, the extended family. Anke was here many times, and it means a lot to have the event specifically right here. This is the spirit we're talking about. So thank you for, for this hall specifically for being offered in this beautiful campus of USF. Thank you to the current and past members of Sigma, Lambda, Gamma, 
sorority for showing their love and support for helping greet guests today. You are the extension. As I grew up and my sister was four years my senior, I always saw her with these unique t-shirts that you may see on a display table. <laughs> and the unique color, a royal color. And I always knew it was dear to her. And that always stuck in my mind. When I traveled to the military abroad, or, or I was involved in other paramilitary structured organizations, and it's like, they have a true priority. And I have to ask, well, I wish I could ask, I had time to tell everybody to stand up individually. I need to ask the sorority sisters to please stand if you're here today, each of you. Sorority sisters, I need you right now because you are my pillar. And the strength a woman carries and the love is just as strong or stronger than any military unit I have the honor to serve with. Thank you, each and every one of you. My sisters, sisters, thank you. Thank you to all the wonderful presenters today who shared their comforting stories for Anke, of Anke, for our family. Felix Figuedero, that family, just as Canassi's family, Bayita, that family has been close to us. They've been, their families have endured as mine did before they came into exile, and they have been champions. They have been spirits in this community. And their profession is to video events, and they've, they've offered their time on their own accord. So I'm grateful to you, Felix. I know you're around here taking snapshots and doing everything around there. Council member Giovanni Gutierrez created the photo video. Thank you, Gio. I'm not even sure if I had the opportunity to see you today or if he's distant for work. Distant for work, okay. Colonel Jeanette Ruth, my sister's sister. One of the original members of that sorority, which I cherish as much as my fraternal order of Freemasons, who have given me the knowledge and the wisdom and the light to embrace the darkest chapters. I honor you, and I will carry you in my heart throughout my life as a guiding example. I do. Thank you for flying down from Washington. I know the task that you have at hand as a leader of sovereign all nation, and you took the time. Thank you. Remember your presence of words mean a lot. All right, let's change it up now. Because the phrase Anke used to always say, all hands on deck. This poster was created by our council member from the Mayor's Hispanic Advisory Council, Maria Maria Sejun. And to this date, I cannot pronounce her name, and I love her, but I can't pronounce her last name correctly. <laughs> Stylin, forgive me, Maria Stylin, created La Obra Eta because it's so symbolic of Anke and all hands on deck. So thank you, Maria. It's a lasting treasure. For all you who took the time to be here, the College of Medicine, thank you for coming. We can feel your love for Anke here and your affection for our family, and it's... Amazing. Emmanuel Auguste, I wanted to tell you, Emmanuel. There you are, sir. Stand up for me. You came from Miami. You called me that next day. And I've had so many beautiful people call me. While our connection is a distant one, I know how much you meant to Anke. And I know how much you meant to you. While I've been guiding all this through with so many different tasks, I've carried you, brother since that phone call we had that day. Know that I cherish you as well. Araceli Martinez, from our council, uh, Mayor's Hispanic Advisory Council. Brian said, I don't know what you heard here, share the lovely words. We had an event where we did by Eulalia's Park by the river. Several of the council members went and they brought the color that Anke loved so much and we did a, a message on a balloon and we released it. As it elevated up, it was almost like the sorrow was leaving your body. And we shared some good words and a little bit of Moscato, Anki's favorite. Uh, and Brian took it upon himself and he asked me permission when he got there, hey, I have something here if it's okay. And he pulls out a box with this white dove. I'm like, what's up? And he goes, if it's okay, if we can release this together, symbolizing you know, Anki's beauty or purity. And I'm like, I agree, there's innocence to it. And it was a remarkable experience. 
a very symbolic one. And Donna was there with me and several of the members, and it was a beautiful experience. Those are all the thank yous, and they'll never be enough. As we conclude now, I'll share the last few words on my part, and I believe out of the family, there's one special person that wants to share her last words here. I want us to know that when we leave, let's plant that seed. I tried my best to keep in my composure, but love is an amazing emotion, so it gets the best of you. But let's plant that seed. When we go home today and we tell that loved one we love them, and you give them that kiss, it's a simple act that we could do for Anke to show that we transmuted an emotion from sadness to happiness, but we really have it within our powers. We can all do something today when we leave that's that minute, but it's actually very big. So when you kiss your loved one tonight, you tell your children, your spouse, whoever, I love you, before you do it, reflect on this day. Nothing's ever lost in the universe, so what seems to be lost transmutes into something else, and we're going to take this experience with all hearts on deck and all hands on deck and do that tonight for all K. And we'll go on with our days and our weeks and our months, but we're going to do it with true commitment to our faith. True faith is in the face of adversity. Mi familia, Belize, quería dar los últimos comentos. Si quieren, los paramos junto como familia y la damos los fuerzas que necesitamos. Hello everyone, my name is Belize, and today we're here to celebrate my mom. My mom was one of the kindest people ever. <laughs> one of the life lessons my mom taught me was the importance of kindness. As I continue throughout life, finish my junior year, my senior year, and enter college, every life lesson my mom taught me is something that I will cherish forever. As I buy my first house, as I have kids, she will always be in my heart. She was my best friend. And as I continue, sorry, as I continue her life will always be in my heart. Everything I always ask in my head, what would mom do in this situation? Because she was always helping me with every little thing. So as we leave today, cherish every little thing because you never know when it's gone. I want to thank you guys again for coming today, and I hope you guys have a good day. <laughs>